Albeit bouncing back from a rough showing in a loss to their in New York rival Knicks, Mikael Bridges just scored 45 points on 17 for 24 shooting from the field. That was in his third game with Brooklyn. If you watch this channel regularly, you're aware the combo forward position has slowly but surely taken over as the primary dominant position for the modern NBA, and that's exactly what Mikael is. Everyone's been talking about Phoenix and Dallas being threats to win the 2023 championship. As much as I love Phoenix and Dallas swinging for the fences, fact of the matter is, KD's never won a ring without Steph, and the combination of Luka and Kyrie may not be the best fit. Not only is Mikhail Bridges the youngest by far compared to Irving and Durant, and not only is Bridges the lockdown defender that he's known for, but he leads the NBA in points per game on spot-up attempts, and Mikhail's movement without the ball perfectly complements that catch-and-shoot equity. Film on that is coming up. But long before the blockbuster which sent Kyrie Irving to Dallas for Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, and a first rounder, or the blockbuster which sent Kevin Durant and TJ Warren to Phoenix for Bridges, Johnson, plus four first round picks, the Brooklyn Nets had quietly been acquiring and developing a wave of young talent. Sean Marks would select the pure shot creator out of LSU and Cameron Thomas with the 27th overall pick in 2021. Brooklyn would also steal NBA ready rim protector with high upside out of Georgia in Nick Claxton two years earlier with pick number 31 in 2019. Amidst those years of pulling off late round magic in the draft, when GM Sean Marks and owner Joe Tsai were building up this Nets roster, it was of course at that time when they were tasked with complementing Durant, Kyrie, and Harden. That led them to balance out that influx of youth with veteran leaders who could hit and make three-point shots at a high clip to suit the space and pace ways of the modern game. Patty Mills was acquired as a free agent in 2021. Seth Curry was a primary retrieval in the 2022 trade deadline deal which sent the beard James Harden to Philadelphia. Brooklyn would then give up their first round pick for 2023's draft to acquire Royce O'Neal from Utah. He's been a big piece to their success this year. But that sacrificing of their future obviously made it tough for Nets fans to hear about Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant requesting trades like a well-timed stagger screen. As I mentioned in my review of the Durant trade among every trade deadline deal in this video right here, Brooklyn couldn't be considered a loser in the deal for Kyrie Irving. That was of course far from the mainstream opinion however, with most poking fun at the Nets new big three, as opposed to the one they previously had with the Beard, Uncle Drew, and KD. Mikael Bridges has been rightfully granted the quote unquote Iron Man nickname throughout the course of his career. This man almost, I'm not going to say never to jinx him, misses games, as Mikhail has a chance to suit up in 83 of 82 games this season, given the schedule at the time of his trade out of Phoenix. Brooklyn's 26-year-old, more than mere 3 and D guy, but potential all-star caliber two-way weapon, is a bona fide diamond in the rough. Why exactly that is, I promise you have to stay tuned for. Right quick, just 19% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, please and thank you leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and for a follow back, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Over the last 10 games for the Ironman against some of the NBA's best competition, one game being against the Boston Celtics where he led Phoenix in scoring with 25 points in a road win against the best team in the NBA on paper. Over that span, Mikhail's averaged 24 points on 50-40-90 shooting. Now you're going to respond to that by saying most of what he did there was just a contribution to raising his trade value, but I think it's deeper than that. Recency bias aside after this monster showing where he dropped 45 points, I believe Mikhail's recent offensive beasting, tear, whatever you want to call it, from the Villanova phenom displays that we're on the verge of witnessing the NBA's next breakout player. And despite Kyrie and Kevin initially being the talking points nationally, and rightfully so, based off how good they are, I think in three to five, maybe five to 10 years from now, we're looking back and saying, damn, Brooklyn really took a W at the 2023 trade deadline when it didn't seem that way at first. Because when you really take a step back, and as we always do, look at things beyond the surface level, then you can dive in to quickly realize that Mikhail's an all NBA defender who hasn't even come close to reaching his full potential on either end of the court. At the same time, there's an argument, not saying I stand by it, 
that Irving and Durant's best days are behind them. Again, not saying I agree with that standpoint, as Phoenix and Dallas are dangerous and capable of flipping the seemingly never-changing narratives of Durant and Irving's career on their heels, but for now, that narrative flipping is being done by the still dangerous Brooklyn Nets. This reminds me of when my Raptors in 2013 gave up a wing in his prime being Rudy Gay, and with the win now pieces the front office had already acquired before that trade, Valanchunas, DeRozan, and Lowry, they were able to shock everyone, make the playoffs for seven straight years before trading Pirtle and DeRozan for Kawhi and Valanchunas for Gasol, which led to a championship less than six years after that Rudy trade. Now, obviously, Kevin Durant is no Rudy Gay, so the similarities are sparse there. But in terms of how my Raptors flipped the script and how this Brooklyn team potentially can over the next decade is similar. Let's get to what makes this still top-notch head coached by Jock Vaughn ball club genuinely capable of securing a playoff spot in the near future and not being the easiest out either by mid-April. Often without Booker and CP3 for the last stretch of his time in the Valley, Bridges showed intriguing aptitude as the primary scoring threat, scoring at least 23 points in every game over an 11-game span where the Suns went 9-2 from January 19th to February 7th. This play sees his attempted backdoor cut off a give and go, get him completely open under the basket, and he gets the miraculous tip in. Got fouled as well, but no call. This transition play sees him fake the full sprint back on defense, which gets Van Vliet to try the cross-court pass. Then Bridges, Olive gets the interception, saves it from going out of bounds on the left side and beats sophomore Scotty Barnes up in transition for the two-way highlight. Catching bullet entries like this one where he stops on a dime at 100 miles per hour off the cut, those take time for a lot of players to absorb, but Bridges right here just swiftly turns the pass from Craig into a weaving bouncer through Brown and Horford to set up DeAndre. Despite fumbling after the push-ahead dribble right here, he's again just gonna both swiftly collect it and find Aiton, this time for the lob, while Mikhail isn't the most high volume guy when it comes to creating off the bounce for himself in either pick and rolls or isos as the main ball handler, he's still very capable of manufacturing offense from nothing. When in the flow, Bridges can manipulate defenses all game by attacking at the right angle and using the proper body angle instinctively on any given take to the bucket, which is something I always try to point out, using angles that is, is crucial for a shot creator to do. In addition to doing that at an incredibly high level, further increasing Mikhail's value is his wingspan, his reactivity, and his shooting range. Here he goes hezzy dribble, then crossover while using a fake moving jab step to bait jumper, dipping his shoulder down on the drive, and bumps off Jimmy for the runner. Here he's going to get Van Vliet on his back while utilizing a few under control low dribbles out of this pick and roll. Quick stop on a dime for the leaning back KDS pull up. This take to his offhand in the pick and roll sees him take off for his layup well beyond the restricted area and have time to get back to his right. However, Mikhail's ability to set up his teammates with kickouts, trusting that he'll get it back and being able to swiftly relocate with his IQ ultimately creates a lot of offensive flow, whether he's scoring or not. Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one are on your screen, but today's question is, what's the net ceiling this year? Thanks for watching, have a good one.